Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog and we're starting off today with a control panel build part two. So what I've done this morning is taken out the bottom plate and we've added a few more of the aviation plugs. We're still waiting for these to come on a slow boat from Yulong Ding Dong. Obviously, taking the time. I've also put in this large cable gland here to accept what is going to be our main power in. Like that. And then that's gonna come in here and we need to send the live through this and that's going to provide the current rating for our panel meter here. I've also found a 24 volt power supply, actually it's 20 volts but it'll do. I pulled this out of an old computer PSU, as you can see, replacement AC adapter and that powers the water meter no problem and we've put the reset button in on the side not what I wanted but well needs must I'm afraid so what we need to start doing now is put in all of the major components onto the back plate in here and uh, then start to send wires to all of the various components so what I'll do is uh, I'll keep coming back intermittently and uh, pointing out what's going where and what have you so you can kind of follow along. So a lot of people have been asking for a wiring diagram or a parts list for the control panel or even a parts list for the brew stand and the whole shebang, the whole setup. So I will try, once the build is finished, I will try to find the time to put together a comprehensive parts list. I'll put the descriptions of the parts there, but not necessarily links. I might say I got mine from eBay or something, so if you search for such and such, you'll be able to find it on eBay or wherever. Most of it come from eBay though, eBay and Screwfix. And then of course, if you wanna build your own version of this, I'm sure that you'll be able to find the parts. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to produce a wiring diagram because well, it's gonna be a massive job, that is. So, to give you some advice, all you have to do is think about each component separately. So you wire each component separately and do it in small pieces. Break down a big task in small pieces. Much easier to accomplish what you're setting out to uh, achieve. But we'll see, I might be able to put together a wiring diagram. We will see. The Electric Brewery website is always a good reference point for those who aren't sure so I'd advise you to go across there and I think Brian at Short Circuited Brewers does a lot of this as well but anyway that's uh, that's enough of that I'm gonna put the radio on and put the camera down and get stuck in to a bit of wiring well we've got some of the first cables in position so we've pulled some uh, power lines for the key switch and the timer. So the main feed, which there will be one of, comes in on this cable, goes through the relay and the timer so we can set the timer. So if the timer ain't on, the panel ain't on. And then that also applies for the key switch. If the key switch ain't on, the panel ain't on. And then that power will come back and energize the buzz bars in here. Now the power is going to run through this uh, RCB, so because this panel's different to what I did for Tom, uh, he's got a 24 volt low voltage panel. We're not doing that here because we're industrial, so we're going full mains, but of course we're protecting everything with an RCD. So we've installed, instead of relays, we've got a DIN rail and MCBs to protect the circuits. Each one of these is for one of the elements. So what will happen is the mains power will come in and it will go straight to that timer and then back down to a buzz bar. But the element current will not be going through there. The element current will be uh, teed off of the RCB 
and it will go up to the solid state relays which will be mounted up here on the heatsink when it finally arrives and then the return from those solid state relays will go into the MCBs out of the MCBs and then they will hook up to our plug sockets here and then across over to the elements. So the fail safe for the elements is circuit breaker for overload protection, MCB for short circuit fault and uh, power off from the PIDs which will break the circuit on the solid state relays. So if there's no power to the solid state relays then the circuit will remain open and uh, if there's a fault on the solid state relays they will, they will trip the RCD if they fault to ground. If they don't fault to ground and they fail open circuit then we're going to have a current surge and that will trip the MCB. So we should be protected in all areas there. The main feed in as well is going to get this little doodly doo hooked around it and that is this cable here that's going to go straight into there and that will of course uh, tell us how much power the whole setup is using. The uh, neutral will go through the MCB as well and the earth will be connected onto this earth bolt on the box and then all of the other earth terminals will be hooked either onto that one or onto that one meaning we've got ground coupling via the box itself so that's early doors yet but that's the plan there's still a lot to do of course but we've got the din rail in and we've got the main circuit inputs and outputs in all we have to do now is populate the rest of it and I haven't screwed any of these bud bars down yet because we'll wait till we've thrown a few more cables across and we'll see what is the best position for them to go in. I've got plenty of cable so I can cut the tails a little bit longer if I need to. Time for a massive update I think then folks because I've been at it for a number of hours. So what I've had to do because I've since found this out is install this 12 volt power supply which fine had to do it for a 24 volt should I say had to do it for this water meter anyway but it turns out that the timer's running 24 volts as well so not really ideal but hey ho it is what it is uh, so what I wanted to do was test all the input circuitry particularly the low voltage side so I've just taken a couple of wires here and run them round to my quick test that I've got just round the corner there but you can see that most of the neutrals are in position. We just have to run the lives to the front of the panel. Uh, obviously I can't install the solid states until they arrive, until the heatsink arrives. That means that I can't install the feed out from the solid states to the MCBs, but once I've got everything else in place and I put this bottom panel on here, then of course I can go ahead and do that. I've installed the buzz bars. I really like these ones. They they come with the little, well, the, they are buzz bars. These are terminal blocks and these are buzz bars, black and red buzz bars, which just slot into the side, save me putting those little bridge terminals in. I think they look really neat. So, like I say, we've got pretty much everything in place. And uh, the main test here is to see whether this 24 volt uh, supply is going to do the job. So there we go. Everything seems to have illuminated. We've got the timer counting down. We've got the on and off light, which is not going to turn off because I bypassed the switch. But you can see on the uh, auto start that we have a light lighting up when I turn the key. We've got the water meter, that's happy, taking the uh, 24 volts and of course as we've just seen the timer's happy. So I'm going to continue wiring up and uh, hopefully the next time we come back 
we should have all the life circuitry in place and maybe we will be able to see the power meter online and majority of these switches and lamps, panel lamps, actually illuminating. But there we go, good progress so far. So I was just wiring up the PID for the mash tun, I hope, yeah. And on the mash tun we've got a two way switch, so it's off in the middle, manual to the right, automatic on the left, and the automatic is going to run through a solid state relay, so the, the PID can turn the pump on and off when it's outside of the temperature threshold. Something that might not work, we'll see, but I thought I'd just in include that feature while I was designing the panel. And I thought, well, I'll run a wire across here, but I'm gonna have to hook it up to the PIDs and just leave them flapping in the breeze, uh, to the SSR, sorry, because we don't have the heat sink. And then right on cue, we get a delivery. So this is not the heat sink that I ordered originally. The original, if this is the heat sink that is, the original was going to be black and a little bit bigger than this one is, but it's been in transit for two weeks now and it doesn't look like it's getting here. So I've put in a claim on eBay and I ordered this one on Amazon pretty much on the next day and well that's what we've got so i'll just cut these bits off and there we go so that's a nice low profile heat sink that's going to sit on the top of the panel and hopefully if my measurements are correct it should fit in there quite nicely how oh, it does so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to get the grinder out and i'm going to have to cut a slot for this to sit in and then we can of course bolt all of our uh, solid state relays to it. I'm not terribly happy about the thickness of the base plate because of course there's not a lot of meat to put your screws into so we may have to just drill holes and drop bolts through. I'll see, I might mount the solid state relays first and then uh, stick it to the top of the panel. But yes, we can get a bit closer today now. So I'm not particularly happy with how I've actually had to do this, but it's been a case of drilling holes through one side of the plate and then sending some nuts in through the other side so we can place the SSR on top with some heat grease just uh, that's empty I've got another one here and uh, we'll put a bit of heat sink compound on there the idea is to line it up over the holes and I've had to cut some machine screws down we'll drop those in and basically just tweak it up so it's not ideal like I say but the most important aspect is making sure we've got good thermal contact with the SSRs and the heat sink so it's not aesthetically pleasing as much as I would have liked it to have been if we'd have got that black heat sink you see which was three times the price of this one but it never turned up like I said then this top section here was 8 mil thick and that would have meant that I would have been able to just drill that there cut the screws to size and then I could have tapped tapped that section and we could have just had the machine screws straight in to the aluminium but as it is this technique will work and we will have adequate contact with the heatsink so you know there's always a way to get round any little uh, 
obstructions, I guess. It's all about problem solving. And that's exactly what we've had to do here today. So I'm going to get the rest of these heat sinks screwed down, heat sinks, solid states screwed down, and then we're going to cut a hole in the control panel for this to go. So a bit of a mix match of sinks here as well, heat SSRs, sorry. So we're going to use 40 amp SSRs, two of them for the boil pot elements, and one of them to control the pump. It's just because I had a 40 amp SSR, so I thought I'd use it. And I've also got a 100 amp SSR. I don't believe it because it's the same size as the rest of them and the same weight. But I'm guessing it's going to be a rip off. The writing's different. So if it's 40 amp, then it'll pair up with the rest, even though it says 100. Some of these 100 amp ones I did actually use in the old Idle Valley Brewery kit and they stood up to a good 60. 40 to 60 amps on quite a high duty cycle so I did melt one or two of them as well if you look back at some of the older videos but I'm pretty sure for switching just one HLT element on and off for a few hours a couple of times a week will be good. Right then folks, it's getting late now. I'm really trying to push this through, but I don't think we're gonna be able to get uh, everything wired up, unfortunately. But, I've just got the one more wire to pop into one of these LED switches here, and I brought it outside to the uh, 16 amp power socket that's on the wall just above me so we've got a plugged in but not yet turned on that's way too long and uh, once we've finished this we're going to turn it on so I've got the relays hooked up I've got the uh, pumps hooked up at least one side obviously when we put that base plate on which has all the connectors then I'm going to have to wire all of those connectors up to uh, to the switches on the panel so when we turn them on and off it will actually work the pumps and not just the lights but here we go so let's close the panel that way and that way and uh, let's turn it on up the top right that's looking smart so we have uh, if you can see it we've got a little light just there which is indicating that something's on let me just adjust the camera there we go you can probably see it a little bit better now you see the little light just there glowing away so if we just tip this back a touch and zoom out right then folks here is the big switch on like I say I can't offer you a wiring diagram but sorry like I say I can't offer you uh, a how-to or and to wiring this up like a live wiring video because it's it's a full day it's taken me 10 hours today to get this to this stage but I could provide a wiring diagram in the future if I get time anyway enough waffle let's pop the key in so this will be the seventh control panel I've built and uh, 
three of those have been three fays. It could even be the eighth, actually. Well, would you look at that? Oh, it looks wonderful. So we have lights on the alarm. So we have lights on the switches for the elements. So we know that when those elements are on, these will illuminate when the switch is on and these will illuminate once we've got everything wired up when the uh, the power is pulsing the power is going to the actual um, element itself so at the moment I've just jumped put a little bridge from the switch to these but what we'll do in the future we'll be pulling a cable off the solid state relay to this to provide the power for these so they'll blink on and off as the PID is telling them to operate so we can turn them off the mash pump that will be on manual and that is off and if we wanted it on automatic we'd put it there and then again the PID will tell the mash pump when to turn on and uh, that will flash on and off as the PID tells it what to do uh, on this side exactly the same with the uh, boil kettle set up so that's not a problem and then down here we've got the HLT pump and the boil pump of course the mash pump is there and then the big on and off key just like that so that's what that light is indicating so now I'm just going to bring you a little closer so I've just brought you in a little bit and changed the saturation on the camera so you can see this. This here is a ZJ LCD M water meter. And what this will do when we set it, for instance, will allow us to increase or decrease the amount of liquid that we want in. So say we want, oh hello. I'm in the settings now. There we go. I'm still unfamiliar with this. So if we want 20 litres in, we'll set this to 20 litres like so. And then we'll press run and stop. And then when it's hooked up, the water flowing through the, uh, the flow meter will make this number climb here and when it gets to 20 litres the machine closes a solenoid valve and cuts it out so you can add as much water as you like every time just by using this panel and you get the precise amount I have tried to use one of these before for uh, sparging and transferring beer it doesn't work when the particles in the liquid so you have to have clean water unfortunately and then just to the uh, the left of it we have our energy meter let me turn that off so the energy meter is giving us volts which we can see here as uh, 246 for the building that's not far off uh, then we've got a watts which is how much energy we're using uh, well all the energy that we're using is what we've got to power the stuff on the panel so I'm guessing if we turn these lights on there we go we're up to 15 watts now so that seems pretty accurate then we've got the amps or the amperes reading there and then we've got the power factor which is 0 0.23 now the reason that that's so bad is because we've got that power transformer inside so once this is running off all you know let's put all the LEDs on and we've got the pumps on and everything else then that power factor as you can see now it's climbed up to 4.43 and when we've got the elements on the amount of power that the transformer is pulling is going to be basically nothing and that power factor should increasingly get closer and closer to uh, 0.99 or 1 and then we've got the kilowatt hours here 
which uh, obviously we're using that little power that's not clocking up and then we've got the Hertz so this little panel meter was about 10 quid from eBay and it's got everything that you need on it absolutely everything that you need on it uh, without having to have two or three meters like they do on the electric brewery design so I think that is top draw anyway that's that folks I'm really pleased that it lit first time and uh, there were no issues I'm just trying to gear up here for a little bit of a uh, what you call it shot a thumbnail shot and while I do that I'm gonna sign out folks and say we'll see you on the next one thanks for tuning in and uh, well we're getting closer every day aren't we we'll see you tomorrow cheers